We are live and we are talking about Tech is Dead. It is the tech lead. He has a lot of different hot takes in the industry. Um, I'm curious to what he's talking about. Tech is dead. Tech seems very alive to me. So we're going to have to take a look and see exactly what he's talking about. And if you have any questions, let me know in the chat. I'll be happy to answer anything. But let's get into it. I'm back. That's right. Here to provide you my worldly wisdom on how to become successful, make some serious money out here. And the first thing to understand is whatever it is you're doing, just stop. Right? You may have noticed I've stopped. I've stopped doing anything productive. Over the past few months, I haven't released a single video because I just realized that it's just totally pointless to try to do anything nowadays when the government is printing inflating massive amounts of money, right? Like you're out here trying to earn your dough and then the government is just printing billions, trillions of dollars out there, just making this money out of thin air to dilute your work. They're just extracting all of your value. So why even bother? Why try? It's a lot like being on the Titanic and then trying to study Java while the ship is sinking or rearranging chairs, doing your lead code and just stop. Right? Just stop. It's over. I know we all feel this need to try to be productive, work hard, hustle, grind. We're addicted to the pain, the struggle of putting in the hard work. But sometimes you mistake motion for action. And in this world of ADHD, the best thing you can do, the contrarian move, is to just do nothing. Just stop moving. Can anybody just do that? Hold still. Because the more you move, the more energy you're going to waste and the faster you're going to die. You're wasting your own resources out here. You're going to have to pay more for food. So you may be wondering what's new. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is new around here. I've been sitting around doing nothing, just staring at the blank screen all day. Because there's no work to do, really, except to just wait. I'm waiting for Bitcoin to get to a million dollars, actually, because it's my only salvation around here. It's the only thing that can save me. And I've recognized that fact, whereas you have not. Many people have not. And they're still out there pretending, trying to struggle, Trying to do something just to keep themselves busy. You can work or not. It doesn't really matter. It's really optional. It's not going to move the needle here, though. I really don't know how people... How this man makes so much money off these videos. It's really, it's really insane to me. Like, as somebody who's a up-and-coming creator... I can't wait for the day I can just get on and ramble. And people will listen. But... Not today. The most important thing when you're sinking on the Titanic ship is really your positioning. You want to get to a life raft, if at all possible, because the whole ship is done. And look, I get it. I've been gone for a while. And you may be under the impression that I've just been slacking off around here with the lack of any new video content. You may think that I've just been hiking the Hawaiian islands, going on Mexican cruises, or exploring Japan like I am now. And well, I suppose you would be right, but you would be highly mistaken to think that I'm unproductive. In fact, I've been more productive than I've ever been in my whole entire life, more productive than most programmers, certainly. What have I been doing? I have been huddling, diamond handing, which is an incredibly difficult skill because it requires me to read news, reread news, and continue to convince myself to just sit still and do nothing instead of trading, buying, selling, getting in and out of positions. Sometimes the best thing to do is to just do nothing. And yes, that is considered to work as well. It's not about how hard you work, but about how smart you work. Don't be addicted to your own pain and suffering. It is not required and certainly not a prerequisite to success by any means. In fact, the path to success is often fun and easy. Let me show you how we do stuff. Bro, what is this dude talking about, bro? I don't understand how this video has... Let me see. I'm going to take this off while I look at the, uh, while the ad plays. But my man Tech Lead is flexing on us. He feels like a rapper to me. Like, dude, it just talks. I'm not, I'm not a fan. I probably wouldn't watch this if it wasn't for uh, the content. But the YouTube algorithm, the YouTube genie said this was something that I should look at. Is Tech Dead? Uh, there we go. Let's, 
Let us get back into it. Notice how everyone seems to tell you to work hard, grind harder, put in the hours, wake up early, but nobody ever tells you what to actually work on, except to maybe go to the gym and somehow this is going to uh, make you successful. Because nobody knows what to actually do. There's nothing to do. There's no actual work for anyone to do around here. What do you want me to do? Build you a little app, some little stupid mini game, in-game monetization, microtransactions. You want me to make you a blog? And this idea of work was really a figment of the last era. But hard work never equals success. You see, I know you. I understand you, you programmer tech bros out there disgusting know-it-all scumbags we're the same actually we're not i'm way better the world is now flooded with computer science degrees everyone's got one i think computer science graduates have tripled within the last decade and companies are now laying everybody off because they just don't need these useless degrees anymore and what's really happened actually is we've moved on from the knowledge economy rationality merit science none of these things really matter anymore I think so. It's kind of funny to me. Like you see me talking about hard work doesn't matter. It's like I see a few points. Like he's saying the truth, but he's like mixing it up in a hot take, kind of like Andrew Tate style. But um, I still, uh, I, I think his point is he's saying is like take a step because we're the economy is bad, and guys, the economy has been bad for many. And like the economy goes in cycles. Right. And there were still many, many opportunities for people to get hired after that. So I, I don't know exactly what he's talking about. Like until AGI comes along and we just you guys haven't seen. We just watched a video about how people are saying AGI is not smart. It's telling people to jump off a bridge. Um, and so uh, AGI, well, AI is bullshitting and I don't, we don't know when that bullshit will go away. So. I wouldn't panic just yet, but back to the video. In today's era, actually, we're entering this post-science, late-stage capitalism era where uh, mostly it's just about power. If you have power, then you get what you want and screw the science, right? Ignore that. You can manipulate the data. By now, people have realized how to game the system in order to achieve the results that they desire. And beyond that, what's really happened is I believe we have reached peak technology actually we invented what is essentially digital drugs digital opioids which is like short form video TikToks, and that has really obsoleted the need for any future technological innovation people don't need any more apps or games when they've become couch potatoes what more do digital drug addicts need after all they're totally content stewing in front of their videos and these short videos and TikToks really provide people with everything they tell them how to think what to do, where to go, what to buy. And so what's happened is even with something as innovative as Apple's Vision Pro VR goggles, with all of that technology, nobody even cares anymore because we've moved on past the knowledge economy. We are now in an attention economy where the number one skill is not STEM. Nobody cares about STEM. The number one skill is your ability to gain attention, right? to draw attention in this world. And if you're able to do that, you'll be able to succeed in the new attention economy. If you can't, if all you know is some... He's telling us right here, like, it's not about the value that he's giving. He's just like, I can hold your attention by saying things that kind of piss you off a bit. And I don't know, it may be, it's working for him. It looks like it since I'm watching the video. STEM degree. Right, science or something, then you're going to fail. Nobody cares about that. Science doesn't even matter. Nobody cares about the science. It's totally fabricated. Nobody believes any of the science or data or any of the research papers. Science has become a means of manipulation. Just trust the science. And yet there have even been recent reports of 11,000 peer-reviewed scientific papers being retracted as science has faced an existential crisis. More than 70% of researchers have tried and failed to reproduce another scientist's experiments. Targaryens are gone. Burn them all! What's with these commercials, man? Let me turn that off. But yeah, um, it's technically right. 
don't know. Let me know in the comments. But it just sounds like a bunch of bullshit, to be honest. Oh, I don't know. It's not. I don't want to say that in totality, but it's some bullshit. <laughs> Science is fabricated. You can check out The Real Anthony Fauci by RFK Jr. is this book that actually claims the entire HIV industry was fabricated to fund Dr. Fauci's little political games and corporate interests in order to funnel money to his friends. What matters more in this world isn't the data, but instead it's having some big influential celebrity voicing an opinion and whatever that opinion is becomes truth. It becomes fact. And so that's why the little computer program you're working on out there, the little app or website or whatever stupid thing you're coding is going to be totally ignored and nobody even cares. You see, what people should do is just relax and sit back like me. You could work, but you're going to get laid off one way or another. Tesla laying off another 7,000 people reportedly starting in June. What these companies do is first they hire you. And then they burn and churn. They threaten to fire you, making you work evenings and weekends, extracting maximum value, milking you for everything that you've got. And then you get fired one way or another in the end, and you lose the equity that you may have been building into that company. They just say, hey, you know what? We don't need you anymore. Sorry. Bye. Bye. And the other thing I think these tech companies have realized. I think what he said is straight facts. That kind of sounds like my life, man. Like, oh, man. Like, oh. Being a software engineer can be so elitist, man. And so much of this game is having the right manager and having the right team and having people that trust you and want the best for you. If you can't get that, your your time in tech will be filled with pain and suffering, like he says. Burn and churn. So if you don't know me, I'm a famous software engineer. Definitely feel like some burn and churn is going on is that with the COVID era and all of the remote work, companies realize that not only can they do remote work, but that they can actually just outsource all workers altogether to third world countries where people are cheaper and people work harder. Americans especially can't compete. No one wants to hire Americans anymore. The American workforce is expensive, self-entitled, lazy, fat, quite literally, and they tend to be social activists. Who wants that on their team? I suppose if you're truly foolish, you could even go to college and get yourself into massive student debt and then try to dig yourself out of that debt through decades of wage slavery in the nine to five cubicle. And maybe, just maybe you might break even or even turn a small profit before you find yourself old and withered away from a sedentary lifestyle, maybe sick and diseased and having your savings destroyed with runaway inflation and ultimately discarded and replaced by AI or outsourced workers as companies burn and churn through their employees. I think there's just no more opportunity in the traditional nine to five world. And so that's why I've decided to just entirely stop trying to be productive. In late stage capitalism, which is where we're at now, there is no actual productivity left anymore. It's a zero sum game and there's only one way left for anybody to make money around here. And it is good old fashioned classic. And this is my favorite scamming and so we have fees convenience fees tips tips upon tips 20 percent tips 30 percent tips hey just give more inventing wars there are gofundmes and charity donations for fake diseases like people pretending they have cancer dark patterns everywhere notice how every single ipad app is a monthly recurring subscription there are credit card fees everywhere speeding tickets for even going five miles per hour over the speed limit they're not actually protecting the roads they're not making anyone safer it's just there to collect money for the government that's what they're doing out there taxes going up without any apparent upgrades to any of the bro it's funny to me that he says scamming bro like this guy seems so sleazy in the sense like he doesn't really care what you think about him. He's just here to say some hard truths and then ramble on. But I guess I'm still watching and the haters watch this video. So it might be something. Infrastructure, you've got hospital bill scams, insurance bill scams, HOA housing bill scams. Like with the HOA, sometimes you're paying thousands of dollars and there's there's no service. There's not even a yard. There's no amenities, nothing. And what what is this HOA fee for? Oh, yeah, right. They're scamming you. And you have to remember all of this is because we're in a stagnant economy. There is zero productivity and whatever you're doing out there for your line of work, just got to keep in mind it's not productive.
And if you want more proof that there's just no more work to be done and we have reached a stage of zero productivity, just look at Apple, which just completed one of the largest buybacks in history where they had so much excessive cash, they didn't know what to do with the money. They couldn't find anything worth investing in, nothing worth research and development in. They didn't need to hire anybody. They just took that money and bought back their own stock. And I'll tell you what they probably should have done with that excess cash is just buy some Bitcoin with it. There was another company, some medical company, Simler Scientific, which they took their cash reserves, put into Bitcoin, their stock went up 28% right away. When we take a look at the overall tech landscape, the metaverse failed, Web3 failed. You know, these could have been entire massive revolutionary industries that would have employed huge swaths of Americans out there. The whole industry was shut down by regulation. And so after that, we were eventually thrown back into the Web 2.0 era, a blast from the past of mobile apps, oversaturated, tired old apps. And there's just no more opportunity there. Not only are consumers tired of these apps and they're vegetating on videos already, but all of the APIs and data that these third-party apps would traditionally have relied on in order to provide services are now being shut down and blocked off for AI, right? No company wants to release their AI data anymore to anybody. And so nowadays, almost every single API is shut down and siloed off from one another to prevent the AI data scraping, thus incapacitating most third-party apps in the process. Now, some people are going to say, well, there's AI at least, right? There was a recent tweet by me. I'm actually kind of like... It's kind of interesting. I did not know this, but yeah, I think everybody's stealing each other's data to make their new AI product. And yeah, perhaps when people come to the conclusion of what it is, then uh, they'll understand. When they come to the conclusion that AI is not going to be all that useful for us, then they'll there will be a big drop in the stock and the economy, but yeah, I forgot what I wanted to say about that. I had this chief AI scientist who said, don't work on LLM. This is in the hands of large companies. There's nothing you can bring to the table. He says, maybe instead you should work on some other next gen AI system that lifts some limitation of LLMs. So I guess there's some opportunity there. If you think you can bring about the next revolution of AI, maybe get a PhD in that first. This is why I stop shopping on Amazon, and you should too. Don't spend another dime on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, what is with these ads? Let me be right back. Oh, my bad. Let's get back into the video. Past tech companies had global reach. Today, most tech companies have had their reach actively being blocked by other countries. Russia, China, the BRICS nations have raised their own digital firewalls. Tech companies are just not as profitable as they used to be as they're now becoming domestic local companies. In conclusion, some errors are just bad. Sometimes you just can't make money. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Tech is done. The STEM degree is done. Merit is done. We're nowadays working is like swimming upstream against the inflation and printing machine. I recently read the Bitcoin standard. And what I came to realize is that when the US came off the gold standard in 1971, it was quite the devious move actually where through that, they unlocked the full value of the US GDP and household economy for taxation purposes. So whereas in the past, all they could do was raise taxes, but your personal property would always have value. It was backed by gold. Now they could just print and inflate all of the US GDP value away. And so now we're paying off our debt by issuing more debt with the US national debt rising by $1 trillion every 100 days in some death cycle. So given that, how do we succeed in this world? Well, first off, if you're working some nine to five wage slave job, maybe you should just stop. It's a total waste of your life. But I have three suggestions. Number one is. I want to say that is completely untrue. He's saying if you should leave your job. I think that I think this is a period like the economy goes in periods of down and up. 
And maybe right now, you've seen during the dot-com plus, many companies were started during a recession, like Netflix, Amazon, um, were started from the dot-com bus. And so this is a good time to learn a new skill um, if you don't have a job and get prepared for the next um, market value. I believe AI is gonna create a lot of jobs. And if you are interested in that type of thing, make sure that you subscribe. My mission is to help people ride the AI wave. And we're gonna do that um, by getting people jobs, seeing how you can use the AI. It's not just for software engineers. If you don't know me, I'm a FANG engineer. Um, I've worked for Google and Dell. And yeah, I think tech has a lot of hope still in the future. So don't give up. Entrepreneurship. Now, of course, you're going to say, well, not everyone can be an entrepreneur. We weren't all made to be one. But you know what? People said the same thing about programmers as well. Hey, not everyone can be a programmer. And yet nowadays, everyone's a programmer. We just adapted to that. And so in the future, everyone may have to become an entrepreneur as well. And you know, we're not talking about some like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos caliber entrepreneur, but even small business owners, hustlers, grifters, blue collar workers like gardeners, handymen, dog walkers, they all qualify as entrepreneurs actually. And many of them make more than some software engineer, especially the laid off ones. And they're probably under less stress and have more free time as well. Now this may be difficult, especially for those who have spent the majority of their childhood trained to be some nine to five wage slave indoctrinated into the school education system. And even more weirdly, many of these people, perhaps including you yourself, still aspire to be some top tier wage slave, climbing that corporate ladder in order to achieve some fancy title or that corner office or that suit. But you've just got to give that dream up if you want to succeed in the new world. The second consideration is we're no longer in a knowledge economy or anything science based. We are in an attention economy, media based. Most apps these days have already been replaced by influencers, content, video. And I'll tell you something, AI is not going to succeed as well, in my opinion, in the world of influencers, because fundamentally, there's no right or wrong answer. We don't live in an objective world. And so the right answer is whatever your favorite influencer or content creator tells you is the right answer. Whatever they tell you to buy, how to live, how to think, that is what you will listen to. You're not going to listen to ChatGPT. I mean, when you think about it, nobody even pays for ChatGPT premium. They're starting to give that stuff out for free. And then the last suggestion, consider taking up a job as a Bitcoiner. Hey, it's not easy and it's not for everyone to diamond hand and huddle all day long. It can be pretty tiring and tough, boring work. But it turns out the more you study Bitcoin, the more serious you become at it, the more you're willing to hold and the higher your profits will be too, or your losses. All right. Anyways, I got... Do you see that smile that he had on his face when he like when it was over? He's like, I can't believe you guys are paying me to do this stuff. To just talk shit. So, yeah, uh, I guess we'll end it there as far as what the tech lead is saying. In conclusion, I would disagree with him saying that the tech is dead. Like there will be no opportunities that AI is going to take everything or I don't know, like whatever he's saying would like. The future is going to be all influencers. I don't agree. Um, but yeah, the, you know, just like I said earlier, like we don't know if like, excuse me, we do not know if the tech, how well AGI is going to do when we see it making mistakes. Uh, look out for a video with me reacting to chat GPT-5 whenever it comes out, maybe then like we'll know for certain is AI going to push us into the next revolution, but promise you guys keep working, keep working hard. Uh, tough times don't last. Tough people do truly believe that with all my heart. And so I hope the tech lead stops with all this tech is dead talk, but it's what it is.